Hey everybody, welcome back to Jimmy's Promo. And today we're gonna to have a battle of the search bar widgets and their accompanying applications. Now, competing today is gonna to be Bing, Google, and the Pixel Search. So on the very bottom, this is Pixel Search. This is what you would find on a regular Google Pixel device. I just happen to be able to download it on my Samsung phone. All you have to do is go inside of the Play Store, you search for Pixel Search, you find this little icon, and that is exactly what it is. It's a free application from the Play Store, and it works just like whatever you would see on a Pixel device. Same thing when it comes down to Bing. So you search for Bing on the Play Store, and then now you're able to get it downloaded. When you download these two applications to add the widget to the screen, you just press and hold, you go inside of widgets and then you scroll down and this is where you can find it. So Bing has 14 different widgets that you can actually choose from. As you scroll down, you're gonna find Google because this is gonna be in alphabetical order. So you have three options. And then for a pixel search, you have your one option and all you gotta do is just press and hold it, drag and drop it onto your screen, wherever you want it to go. You change the size and the placement and now you're ready to start searching off of a widget rather than just opening the application itself. Now on the screen here, these are not in alphabetical order. You can say that they are, but they're actually in order of my favorite from best to worst. Honestly, Bing gives you so much more power. It does way more than what Google does. And really uh, the pixel search here is just really Google kind of built in. So it's one of the lesser ones because it's, I mean, it's something that you can search for things on your phone. It's very one dimensional. If you search for whatever, it'll find applications. It can search things on Google, YouTube, you know, Samsung Internet, Maps, Netflix, Play Store, YouTube Music, Twitter, so on and so forth. You can even change some of these. You can go through your settings on the very top right hand side. If you go inside settings, you change the theme. You can get a different icon pack. You can go through your search settings, search preferences. I've played with a few things in here, but it's not as fully intuitive. Um, to show you fully what all of this is able to do right here, if I tap on the G, it'll take me inside of Google. Pretty much that's literally the exact same right here with the Google search bar widget. You tap on the G, it'll take you inside of the Google um, application basically. So here's a Google application. That's all it does. So when you tap on the G, it takes you inside of that. Same thing here with the pixel search, takes you inside. When you hit on the search, this is gonna be all of your search history. And the cool thing as well is it's gonna show you the recent applications that it thinks that you might would you know want to open up. And honestly, these are the five applications that I use the most on my phone on a daily basis. So it does a really good job at predicting what applications to put on the very top. That is one good thing I do like about the Google search bar widget. Now, when you go to Bing, there's only one area of improvement. And that is if I tap on the B, I want it to open Bing application. This one, really all it does is it opens up the exact same thing as if I was to tap on the bar um, and it's gonna be pretty much the AI, which is built in. It'll show me some of the rewards uh, and then also some of the things that I might like and then also what is trending. And you can hide these if you want. You can even go inside of uh, in private, which is very nice. So when you start searching, you're in private searches. They're never saved. It's not gonna be a part of the search history. And the moment that you're done searching for everything, you turn it off and then now it's just all gone. Um, what I wanted to do is open this right here when I tap on a B. I wanted to open up this application. This thing is just so full of everything. There's these different categories and uh, you know applications that is a part of it, like your shopping, the sports, unit converter. You can solve math problems by scanning, drawing, typing. Some trending stuff, wallpapers, which would go here, the deals, your, your money market, all of that good stuff is all right here. So that is just all talking about just the, the icon right there. Now let's just look at the Google search bar widgets itself, or I should say all of the widgets itself. So first off, we already played and talked about the G and the B. We talked about what would happen if you tap on the search, uh, you know, you know, bar itself. It's just basically your search. Um, you know, same thing with all of them right here. And then when it comes down over on the right hand side, you have your microphone. So this way you can ask questions, you can do things, commands. They all three have it. Then they all three also have the lens as well. So when you tap on, you know, the Google lens or, or the, the Bing one, you take a picture of something uh, and then you're able to find other images just like it. You can scan barcodes, QR codes. If I, if I take a picture of, let's say like a Tonka truck, like a toy Tonka truck, it's going to show me other options. Uh, images like the, the Tonka truck and also places of purchasing it. You know, same thing with this Google lens as well. So really they all do the same thing when it comes down to the mic as well as the camera. Now I will say when it comes down to the mic, uh, the Google search bar widget does a good job at opening a couple applications 
uh, it's the ones that they own. So let's say if I if I hit on the mic and I say open YouTube, it'll open the YouTube app. If I say open YouTube music, it'll open the YouTube music application. When it comes down to Bing, it's not able to do that. You know, Google owns YouTube, Bing does not. So it will open YouTube website uh, and then either go to either normal YouTube or the YouTube music. So this is where, you know, this is where it can lack, but everything else that it can do, it, it can definitely make up for. So we talked about all the widgets. Now let's talk about the applications that come with them. So the pixel search, well, it's the same thing as if you if you tap on, on the dang widget. So it's really nothing special. The G over here takes you inside of the Google application. Uh, same thing as if you're to have, you know, tap on a G over here. And then with Bing, this brings you into, you know, the full entire application, which I just gotta get out of that little camera. So now let's talk about kind of what all they offer. So really, you know, Google, I mean, it's just, it's just one dimensional. You just kind of scroll and that's pretty much about it. Uh, you can like some of the pages, you can share them. You know, there's, I mean, that's pretty much about it. It's very simple. Um, you know, it does a pretty good job at scrolling as well. It is kind of smooth, um, but when you go inside of Bing, it's actually way more smooth. Uh, I know that the camera only has certain frames per second going on, but when it comes down to the human eye, Bing is way more smooth and it goes quicker. Also, what I love is when you go through the stories, you will have your likes, your dislikes, as well as comments. So if you wanna see what other people are thinking of all these different articles, go through and take a look at them. You know, we got some trending stories. Here we go, we got a little bit of a different playing field of going up and down. We can go now left and right. And again, you can read people's you know, uh, opinions and, and uh, you can see if people like the article, they don't like the article. Google doesn't offer that one. So again, this is super nice. So let's just go back inside of Google. Let's see what we can do. We have Discover, so it's basically the news. Uh, looks like we can kind of search for some products, translate some things, solve a little bit of homework, identify a song, weather, and then the news. Here's the search, and then collections, which I don't really know what collections is. And that's really pretty much about it. That is the full entire scope of Google. Now, when you go inside of Bing, let's take a look at this beast. You have the home button on the bottom. You have all the stories. You also have all of your different apps and categories just scrolling right through here and there's a lot of powerful things then you go inside of news check this out here's the headlines this is everything for you because i curated this i went through and i added in what i was interested in again here's your likes your dislikes all of the comments you can read what people's opinions are here's your local again you also still have your weather just like from before here's your local news everything in this area here's top news and these are the categories that i chose you know, uh, with inside of Google, I don't believe you can choose different interests that, you know, interests you. I mean, here's Samsung products, Galaxy phones, Samsung. You can see all of that because I chose all that. And I can show you where you can do that in actually just one second. So that was the news. And then here is your AI built in. You just got to sign up for it and sign in and that's it. So you can choose how you kind of want it to be. You want it to be more creative, balanced, or precise. Now for me, I actually use the creative because I use this to find my titles for my YouTube videos. Give me five examples with max characters of 63 that is a better title than Battle of the Search Bar Widgets. Here are some possible titles that are shorter than 63 characters. How to choose the best search bar widget. Search bar widgets, a comparative analysis. So here is the answer. And here's the thing, Google's not able to do this. So what I said was, give me five examples with max characters of 63 that is a better title than Battle of the Search Bar Widgets. And here is the five different answers. Uh, how to search the best search bar widget, or how to choose the best search bar widget. Search bar widgets, a comparative analysis. The ultimate guide to search bar widgets. Which search bar widget is right for you? Search bar widgets, features, benefits, and drawbacks. So it gives you some really good creative you know, answers for what you might ask it. And so all of that is built in right here. And you can even say things different and you can say something like how to bake a cake. Baking a cake is a fun and delicious activity that you can do at home. There are many different recipes and flavors to choose. Now, as it's responding to you, you can actually just tap on the very bottom and she'll stop speaking, um, but it is still going to keep responding. So it's still going through how to bake a cake. And then down here, it's gonna show you all the areas of where it found its information. So as it finds more information, it's gonna keep on adding more inside of here, but you can go through here and you can see exactly, you know, 
uh, the steps of how to make a cake. Uh, after it gives you all of these steps that are all written out, what comes after this is pretty cool as well. It comes off with some other searches, it's gonna come off with some images, and it's gonna come off with some videos. So this way, if you would like to see someone else do it, uh, you can see someone else do it as well. So I'm gonna hit on stop responding. But yeah, so it actually comes up with so much. And I mean, it's, it's literally like your assistant telling you exactly what to do. And it's just so much fun when you play, you know, with being with its, you know, integrated AI. And then if you want a clean, you know, a whole new clean slate, you just hit that little clean button. Now we're gonna move over into tabs. So this will be anything that I kind of went through, searched and opened up. So, I mean, I searched before to kind of how to find a, or, you know, bake a cake. And so this was what I saw. Uh, if you were to read any other article, so if you tap on like, let's say the news and then you tap on one, and then you go through and it might be, you know, something else, it, you might get a whole different tab. So I already have a tab with news, so it wouldn't pop up there from the news. So now we're gonna go inside of this very last, you know, page over here. This is called apps. So like what I'm trying to say from before, you know, Google is really cool. It's just so one dimensional. It doesn't really give you a lot of offers of really anything. There's really nothing built in other than just the search. When it comes down to Bing, you have not only just the Bing search, but you have everything that it comes with as well. Now this is where you can change your interests. You can take a look at your bookmarks and your history of everything. Uh, so like, let's say with interests, you can go through and you can select what you would like to add in, what you'd like to take off, and you just basically you know go back. Now you can search for topics. So you can search for something in particular. So if you wanna search for it, then you can find it. You just hit on done. Uh, so now we're gonna go right back inside of apps. As you scroll down, you will actually receive rewards for doing searches and doing things. Wallpapers, it's just talking about the wallpapers on that homepage. Here's your money market. So some of what you'll see here is already a part of the home, which is pretty nice. Autos, this just takes you over inside of autos. So you can actually search for vehicles to buy, sell. If you have questions, you can look at car news. You know, it's all gonna be here. Again, you can notice that my tabs went up. So it's gonna show you all of my tabs. So if you go through something different, like these different apps, you will be able to simply just go right back to what you're doing from before. So again, I'm gonna go back. Uh, here's the Bing image creator. So this is very fun. So, you know, we could do something like this. Uh, you know, we can make it surprise us or uh, we can take a look at my creation. So this one right here was a pixel art of a Jack Russell Terrier floating in space with moon and stars. So that was what it came up with. This one, I searched for a white toy poodle doing chores. <laughs> so that's super funny. Uh, you can share it. You can save it to your phone if you would like. Another one I did that was really funny was I did uh, Pikachu doing squats in the gym. And so through, uh, you know, AI powered, which this is powered by Doll E, built within Bing, I was able to create this just by writing or saying whatever I wanted. And it was created with AI. This is not owned by anybody. This was created by me. It was actually very cool. So you can also explore ideas. It'll give you some ideas of what you can search or you can just say like, surprise me. Um, and then let's just see what it says. So futuristic Nike sneaker digital art 3D render. Okay, let's see what this one, let's see what this one offers us here. And what's fun is when you, when you do this, then you can save it and then you can put it up as a YouTube uh, thumbnail as well. Or you can just put it on your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook, whatever it is. Wow, check this out. So this is uh, image number one. Here's image number two. Now, I mean, they're not gonna go with the exact Nike symbol. I mean, obviously you can't do that. Uh, I mean, well, hey, I guess <laughs> I guess they got close with some of the other ones. I mean, I don't know what this is trying to be. That's just kind of looks a little different, but you know, hey, this is it. Futuristic Nike sneaker, uh, digital art 3D render. So super, super cool. Again, you can save these. Uh, you can do whatever you want with them. And here's your tabs. So here it is again, Bing images. So you can go right back to that if you would like to. Again, going back inside of here, you got deals, you got buy direct, commute, health, games. This could be everything with health. Talk about food and clothes, whatever, money. Here's your math so it can you know solve problems for you. What's nearby, unit converter. Yeah, you have so much stuff going on here. Uh, and then let's say that you wanted to go inside of settings. Now with settings, I scroll down just a little bit. My main normal login is up here, um, but down here you got your general stuff. Here's your privacy. You can go through region and language, permissions, set as default browser. Here's your preferences, homepage, notifications, search, rewards, community, passwords. Here's your themes. 
and then advanced you can you know take a look inside of advanced as well too but I, I didn't really play with that too much but there is some settings that you can go through inside of here if you'd like to make any changes and now you can really see how and why this thing is just so powerful uh, again the pixel search doesn't really do anything other than search for what's on your phone search for the internet it just has google built in right there with a the little g again same thing here there's your g uh, here's your G, Google search, doesn't really offer much. This one is just a regular search. You can just go directly into search. Here's your AI that you can go directly into. Um, I kind of wish, you know, that you could go directly into this homepage from it. Really, this was the only quickest way for me to do it. So if I go here, I tap this, it puts me right inside of my, my, my home. But I kind of wish it would happen with the Bing home when I hit on the B button. Uh, but yeah, you can just see how much more, you know, this thing does. You have tabs of everything. It's curated for what you want to see. It has built-in AI. It has all your tabs sitting right here. You can go right back to. Here's all these apps, all these these tools that you're able to use um, that that Google just does not have. And I mean, they do have a few, but they're they're sitting right here. So like, what you know, this, this I mean, that's what you get. I mean, this is the, that. I mean, that's it. So the winner, I mean, by a long mile for me is Bing. It it finds everything that you needed to do. They're both limited, Google and Bing, when it comes down to you telling your phone what to do. Bixby can do everything. You know, these two, you know, they are a little limited. Google can do a little bit more because they can open up those YouTube apps, but it's because Google owns YouTube. So this right here, Bing is the clear winner. Now, if you kind of want to have the best of both worlds, you can keep your Google search bar widget right here. But what you might want to do is take this little Bing application and let's see here, move it maybe right next to a little you know search bar so this way you have best of both worlds there's your google with the search bar widget here's your bing has everything built in uh, again you can go inside your home there's your searching and it's just all right there so summary bing is the full clear easy everyday winner with everything that they have built in it's smooth you can fully curate it for what you want to see what you don't want to see you can take a look at your topics you can edit these topics you have all your tabs, you have all of these crazy tools uh, along with your AI built in, the conversation piece, as well as uh, your, your image AI as well too. It's super cool. Um, I love Bing. I hope Samsung actually switches over into Bing. I mean, there was the story before talking about Bing being used on Samsung devices. Now, the main reason why I wanted to talk about this topic is because it's been in the news lately that Samsung might replace and get rid of the Google search bar widget on their Samsung Galaxy devices in the future and head over to Bing. And I really, really, really hope that that happens because Bing just offers way more and it has AI already built into it. Samsung is a massive partner of Microsoft, and I know they can work together to make this thing perfect, but I do believe Samsung should shake up the industry, move over to Bing. It's way more powerful, even though Google might lose out on like a $3 billion, you know, contract with Samsung uh, or partnership. I do believe that uh, Bing will be the better search bar widget. Uh, I mean, we're still going to keep on, you know, having our Google Play Store. It's still going to be here. Samsung's, you know, still going to use that. You know, they're not going to take that away or anything like that. But when it comes down to the search bar or just the application, at least install it, put it on the phone, have it as maybe the default. People can switch between the two if they want to. Uh, but again, I think the best you know situation, the best scenario, if you want to, is you can keep your Google search bar there. And then you're being right here because it is just way more powerful of a tool. But I hope that you guys have appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section below which of these you are now going to start using or if you're going to stay with the Google one. Uh, other than that, hit on the little subscribe button on the very bottom left hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.